Hi everyone, today I'm going to just put out a little video about how to use the width tool in Illustrator. I've had a request for this from one of my viewers. Um, so this video is just going to show you how to use the width tool uh, working with lines and then using that to construct um, some lettering with it. My name is Philippa, today I'm using Illustrator CS6 on a Mac. Uh, let's get started. So I'm just going to delete this off. Um, I've just got a single layer at the moment and I want to make some curvy sort of copper point style lettering. Ideally you'd be working from a sketch, you'd scan it in and then use that as your reference. I haven't done that, instead I'm going to be a bit naughty and actually use a typeface for that. So I'm going to make the word curvy. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. Now this font, as you can see, is not a script. So I'm going to change that to a script typeface and I'm just going to use there it is, Edwardian script. And the way I'm going to use this is just as a reference for my lettering. So just to get the basic shapes, I'm going to go to my layers panel and just lock this layer so it doesn't move around. Same as you would do, this is where you'd put your scan and just grab myself a new layer. Now to get the basic lines of these, this lettering, I'm going to use the pen tool. If you need more help on using the pen tool, please check out my other videos. I've got quite a few on how to use the pen tool, especially on getting interesting curves. So I'm just going to set up my stroke and I'm going to choose another colour, so I'm going to work with traditional bright pink so I can see it. I'm going to start by um, looking at the shapes I'm going to create here. So I've got two shapes, one is the C and one is the Irvy, because you can see these are all joined together. So I'll start with the C, and actually I'll probably just complete the C today, make this nice and quick. I'm going to start at one of the ends, I'll start here. I'll click and I'll drag up. The reason I'm dragging up is because that's the direction the stroke is going. So then I'm going to look where the stroke hits a ceiling and it hits one up here. And if you want to know more about this technique I'm using to draw the shape with, as I say, have a look at some of the other videos. Don't worry about messes like this. That will be fixed up, I promise. I'm just work my way around the letter. And I'm going to leave it there so this end piece won't be created with the width tool. Uh, so we can see we've got some very serious problems. There's one here, here, there and one here. I'm going to use the direct selection tool, the white arrow tool, to fix these. Just by either clicking on one of the points that is involved in that curve, I can see which one is needing to be adjusted. So I'm holding shift as I pull that in. Let's go back and adjust these curves. Now one thing I would like to do is go to my layers palette, turn off the source image underneath and have a look at my line and I can see that it kind of comes around and we can see that this curve here it's a bit sharp so I'd potentially just go in there and pull this out and make it a bit softer. The longer the length of the handles the softer the curve and this is where you can really go to town setting up all your curves. For this demonstration this will be good enough. Um, I have a few issues with what's happening down here. As I say this is just a, a demonstration so this will do. She says and then goes and fixes it. <laughs> Alright now to use the width tool you can get it by pushing shift W or you can select it over here. It's the width tool and you can see there's the keyboard shortcut. Basically what it does is creates or adds width. So you can make things thicker or thinner. 
Um, if I have a look back at my source imagery, we can see where the width is occurring. So it's kind of on the sides and kind of on the sides at the top up here, um, but not so much over here. So I could copy that if I wanted. And if you've drawn your own, you probably will want to, or you can make up your own rules. So um, let's just try it where all sort of vertical lines have more width. So I'm just going to, you can see it's going to create a point for me. Click and drag, and I'm just dragging to the right. And you can see it is um, making it thicker. So you've got the thin point on either end, and then this point of thickness. So that's the middle point of the thickness. Um, so I'm going to maintain the thickness on the sides and just go to make it thinner. So I'm just dragging this in thinner. I'll drag it a little bit wider here, thinner as it goes over the top. Maybe thinner still here. It's quite hard to see that colour. Top thinner, carefully. This one down here doesn't look so good. And of course, the thinner you make these, the more sort of elegant they will get. These are quite a bit too thick, like this is too thick around here and too chunky up here. So shift FW, I'm going to pull this one back in a bit. Pull this one back in a lot. Sometimes it can be a bit tricky, it's hard to grab it. You can actually move these around as well. I'll zoom in here. Yeah, that's the shape I've got so far. You can see, you can see there are some definite issues with these curves, but this is the basis of the technique. I'm trying not to add too many more points to this because the more of these width tool points that I add the more complex and hard it will be to actually edit the width of the shape and then of course I need to add the ball terminal on here so I'm just going to use the regular old shape here And I'll just sort of free draw my bracketed ball terminal in here. And it's called bracketed because it's got this little bracket here. And the last thing I need to do is make sure that, that is lined up correctly, which it's not. I need this point here to just make a beautiful tangent into there. Now that needs a lot of work to get that looking satisfactory. I would also want to do something with this end here because cutting it off like that doesn't look terribly natural. So after I've created my letter form with the width tool, you know how much I love to copy stuff. I'll probably copy that whole chunk down. I uh, go to Object, Expand Appearance. Now this will convert it out of being a stroke with a width to being a path around the outside. And we can see that because of the width tool we've got a load of extra points. These do actually create a bit of a problem. All these extra points. So 
it would be worthwhile going through and deleting as many of these as possible out and redrawing the line almost. We can also see that we've got points here where the line is crossing over itself. So this would need to be simplified before you transferred it across into, um, into your font editing software. To give you an example of how I would simplify these points out, um, I'll look at this section over here. So um, if I scroll back up, I originally had one point on the left, so that's what I'd like to do. Um, let's have a look here. I'd like one point on the in interior curve and one point on the exterior curve, so I'm going to keep that one there and delete everything else. Before I do that, however, as soon as I start deleting them, this is the curve is going to change. I want to maintain the curve, so I'm going to copy this and go Command B to paste in the back and just change the color so that I know which one is the old one. So I can see here that I went paste and back and I changed it to green, there it is there and I'm just going to lock it. So you can either um, press lock there or choose command 2 and that will lock it there. So if I move this you can see there's a green one behind it. Right, with the pen tool I'm going to keep that one and I'm going to delete all these other ones. Oops, I needed that one. So I've just got the basic pen tool. I'm mousing over. I'm going to get the little minus sign. It means I'm right at the top of one of the points. And I can just click to delete it. Which is what I want to do. I've got a few more up here. So what I'll be doing is reverting this back to basic artwork with um, points only occurring where it hits uh, one of the ceilings, floors or walls. So you can see with the interior curve I've totally ruined it. I can fix it. You can fix it to drop the opacity a bit. So we can now see through the pink to the green one beneath. Just creating an interesting colour. The pen tool, I'm going to hold down Alt to get the convert anchor point tool and just go over the node, over the point, not the handle in my case. Click and drag, holding Shift. And then I can edit the point this way. Um, so I'll need deleting all of these ones except for one up here. Same deal. Go through, delete them. Because if you do try to take artwork like this into your font editing software, yes it will work, um, but it also may cause all manner of problems. Um, the way different softwares operate, they draw their curves and using slightly different methods. So it can cause you a few issues with how your uh, curves look. So if you know you've got the simplest artwork to start with, that's going to make it easier to fix any errors that do occur once you get through to your font editing program. There we go, so this, is, this curve has now been created in a much more simpler fashion with one point at the top where it hits the ceiling and one point on the left where it hits a wall. With the terminal, I would need to um, add that on. I'm going to go in and turn off the green one underneath. Bring this back to 100%. And yeah, what I'm looking at doing is simplifying these so we have no overlaps and joining this part in. So I'm going to grab um, both parts. I've got the C and I've got the terminal. I'm going to get my Pathfinder tool and I'm going to click Unite. So I've done that. You can see that all the little lines across here have vanished. This is because this is now simplified artwork and um, this is the end result that we're looking for here. Once you simplify out all these many, many, many little points that have 
been added by Illustrator. I hope this tutorial helps you to create curly, swooshy, copper plate style lettering for your work. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe to my channel. Bye!